Okay, so Geekworm have sent me three NVMe adapters for the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, the X1000, 1001 and X1002. Let's have a look at the 1002 first. So this one goes underneath the Raspberry Pi, which means that it's suitable if you've got cooling on top of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the, the way it gets its power is these little pins. And if you have a look closely, they push in. So first of all, let's pop the ribbon cable in and close that up. Yeah, that's nice. And let's find an NVMe drive. And I'm going to use this Keox here because it's going to fit into all of them. So let's pop that in. Now I've just noticed where you fix the NVMe drive to is actually soldered in on this board. Now it might be different because uh, I've got an early board. But uh, obviously there's all these slots here, but I can't use them without an adapter and it doesn't come with an adapter. Luckily, inside this Oroco adapter, which is an M.2 to USB-C adapter, it comes with these little rubber bungs, which I think might work. If I pop that in there, that luckily holds it in place. So we'll use that for now. All right, how am I gonna fix this to this? So it'll be this way around. And we don't have any clearance in there. That's actually touching, so I'd need to space this out a little bit. Luckily I have some adapters. So these are gonna go up through. Oh, and then if I space that out with some bolts, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, and they fit on there. So that will give me enough clearance to get the NVMe from not touching the base. So that's four of those on using these extra bolts. And let's pop that on top and screw it together. There we go, happy with that. And there's enough clearance. So pop the Pi 5 on top. I need to work out how this is gonna work. Ah, okay, so here's, here's where it all falls down because this adapter won't go on because it needs to screw up from underneath. So I've had a look around and the ones that do screw in from the top are this passive cooler from Edatech, but also the 52 pi ice tower cooler will also do it. Now I can't use the same attachments that we've got here, but it will work, I'm sure. So let's take this one apart for now, which comes apart really easy because it's got a little finger twist bits. It would work with this because there's nothing on the base of this. So I could use it with this one, but I'm thinking to try and make use of the cooling on this, it's better to have something on the top. But let's get this off. There we go. That was, that was nicely put on. Well done, Lee. So let's put that a little bit straighter on this one. I could use thermal paste, but I'll use the pad for now. And we've got to think about how we put that down, but we need it to have the same height. In fact, so we just use these and we just reverse them. I feel there's probably enough space in that standard one that comes with this case. So let's reverse these and screw them in there. Just going to do them loosely first of all because I want to make sure those GPIO pins seat perfectly. So it's these two that need to be spot on. So let's squeeze those two together. That looks good. Let's tighten that up. Oh, it doesn't go in any further. Oh no, it won't go in any further because that thread's too high. Yeah, whatever I do, that's not going to work because this is longer than that thread. So then I thought of this as an option, but is the Pi, yeah, that would be okay. That would hold it in place. Yeah, there's no movement there. Oh, no, you can't do that because then they don't fit. <laughs> oh dear. And I'm just gonna use these little screws. These do go all the way in. So that's holding that in place. There's no give there. Okay, let's pop that one on the official Raspberry Pi cooler. There we go. 
and that's the fan plugged in so now we need to put this ribbon cable in properly oh that's not going to be easy oh dear okay so finished I did have this the wrong way around because it says 2 pi 5 and I was thinking it meant to go to the pi 5 but yeah it's to the pi 5 and the other one says PIP on it so that's all plugged in let's switch everything on interesting to note so you do still have access oh yeah you still have access to the SD card just about uh, when this ribbon cable is in place and I'll test that because I've got no OS on well it's a I've got uh, chromium on there for the orange pie so let's grab an SD card and see if that still fits which it does that's handy let's write an image with Raspberry Pi imager choose device so choose operating system so we'll just go with 64-bit Raspberry Pi OS choose storage there's my 256 gig Heoxia and hit next. I'm not going to change any configuration and yes. Pop my password in and come back when that's all done. Oh, look how fast it is. Didn't take very long at all. And as you can see, verifying doesn't take very long either. Really zipping along. So let's shut that down. Let's remove the SD card, which comes out fine. And let's restart that but now running off the NVMe drive. And we get a nice little blue light that flashes. So let's launch diagnostics and do three tests. So run test, and you'll see that it happens very, very fast. Show log, and what I do is do this three times. So sequential write speed 362,077, random write speed 78,392, random read speed 53,718. But these tests will get faster when I enable Gen 3 speeds. And run again. So what I do is take the best random read speed, uh, which is 53718. In fact, it happened twice, this one and this one. Random write speed was better on this one, so I'm going to go with this test, the first one. So let's delete these other two. I always do the same with the speed tests, and I need to save that. So now what we need to do is open a terminal and type in sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config dot text. And we're going to add a line in. doesn't really matter where we do it. dt param equals pcie at one underscore gen equals three. So let's save that with control x and yes and enter and then shut this down and reboot. Okay, so that's the first test. So let's do show log and see, yeah, that we've got much better speeds already. So let's copy that over. So we can see that uh, these were all much faster. So sequential write speed has not doubled, but nearly doubled to, well, the fastest was 682,666. Random write speed has gone up from 78,000 to 94, 92 and 93,000. And random read speed has gone from 53,000 up to 59, 58, and 59. So yeah, some really impressive speeds. I can't really compare them to the EDATEC NVMe board because it was using a different NVMe drive. So fastest random read speed was 59795, yeah. So let's get rid of these. And just to show the EDATEC speeds that I had, uh, so actually sequential write speed was faster, random write speed was slightly slower, uh, random read speed was quite a bit faster, but again, that could be down to, I was using the drive that Edatech gave me, and in this one I'm using the Keoxia drive. But from now on I think I'm going to try and use this Keoxia drive for all the tests, so it's a bit more consistent. But yeah, really pleased with those results, it feels incredibly snappy as you would expect an NVMe drive on a Raspberry Pi 5. So let's shut this down and try the next NVMe solution. I'm not going to do quite so much building in the next one. I'll just put it, I'll put it together and then start testing. And I changed my setup a little bit. So in the end, I wasn't using this base um, just because I needed to take the NVMe drive off again. Uh, and I used a little adapter. This is one that converts a 30 to a 42, but the one I was using 
was this one that converts a 30 millimeter to an 80 millimeter and you can see I was using the screw on the board and that was working absolutely fine for me. So let's try something else. Okay, so on to the X1001 and this is an interesting one because you remember this one takes its power from the GPIO pins. This one doesn't. This just uses the ribbon cable and that provides the power to the board. So it's a more simple setup, but as you can see here in their wiki, how to power, can power the X1001 shield directly from the FFC PCIe ribbon providing maximum of 5 watts continuous power. Well that was very straightforward, as you can see just the ribbon cable going up and then it's got these three standoffs that elevate it over the Pi, so not one on this side but one in this corner and uh, yeah, very nice and it's booted up fine and I know I said I wasn't going to do any more building but I think it's going to fit inside this 52 Pi case so if I drop it into here this way around, which I don't really want to hold it by the M.2 drive. So like that. And then this screws up from underneath. So like this. This way around because it's got rubber feet. And that holds it in place. And I'm using all the screws that came with it, no extras. And as you can see, there's plenty of room in here. Uh, there's loads of space at the top. The case does come with a fan. Now that would be, there's not enough room for that fan, but obviously we've already got a fan inside. Uh, and I can always mount the fan this way up. I'm not going to bother plugging in this fan. Because I'm already using the official cooler. I'm just going to leave one bolt on for now, but that definitely works. That's fine. So let's plug this one in. Yep. Happy with that with the NVMe inside and that's just booting up now. And after the three speed tests, this was the fastest random read speed. So 59578, not quite as fast as the random read on the first board, but uh, we did have a quicker sequential write speed and the random write speed was exactly the same on both. So yeah, very, very similar performance. And this one has GPIO pins, and you can see that it basically just sits on the Pi 5 and then gives you more GPIO pins on the top. We've got our PCIe connector, we've got our M.2 NVMe, but as you can see, it's just designed for the two smaller sizes, 30mm and 42mm. You could put longer on there, but obviously you won't be able to fix it down. Little tiny ribbon cable and some more standoffs and screws. Now, this would also fit inside this case, uh, although it orients differently, so because it's sitting on the GPIO pins, the drive is much more central, uh, and the standoff, it doesn't use that standoff, it uses this standoff. So yeah, pretty much the same design. But I'm gonna have to take this out because I wanna use the same pie for every test. So this looks like a very good design in the way that the fan is directly under the M.2 drive. So it's going to come up through here and really cool that M.2 drive because they do get quite hot. So yeah, that's impressive. Seems to be the same thing with the M.2 drive. So, you know, this hole doesn't have a mount point or a thread on it. So I could use that rubber bung. I'm just going to leave it loose for now. But uh, I can use my 2242 adapter, but it is a bit broken on here. So I need to print another one. So it's obviously taking the power from the GPIO pins and also passing them on to the top here. Uh, and this would definitely work with this case again. Uh, if you took the fan off, you've just got a hole. And that hole is kind of directly over the fan. So that's going to be better for airflow. But I'm going to leave it open for now. Okay, so last round of tests. Let's open this up. Pop it over here and diagnostics and run tests. Okay, so once again, the fastest random read speed, which is the, it, I think is the best way of running an operating system. It makes the most difference. So these are two the same, 59362 and then 58099. So it's between these two, which one's got the right speed? This one's got the fastest right speed and also sequential write speed. So let's delete these two. Okay, so 
very similar results on all three boards. So it's going to matter what you're putting it into, what you're doing with GPIO pins, uh, where your calling is, all sorts of things like that are going to make a difference. So the X1002 was the slowest of the sequential write speeds, but the random write speed was fastest uh, with the X1001. The X1000 was slightly slower, but hardly anything in it. But the random read speed, uh, we've got the best results on the 1002. But again, these, these tests are so similar, there's really nothing to worry about. So basically buy the one that fits the form factor for you best because, yeah, they all do the same job and uh, just in a slightly different way. So well done to Geekworm for making three different designs. So we've got loads of flexibility. I've got some ideas I'm thinking about of where these will be able to go. But uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.